So now we're going to go over um, the different oxygen delivery systems or methods. Uh, you do, before initiating oxygen, you do need to make sure that there is a physician's order for it. Most places or most facilities have standing orders to, to cover for um, kind of critical or emergent situations where the person needs oxygen um, right away. So you just want to make sure you understand and know your facility's policy and procedure on that and or what the standing orders are for your patient. So when we talk about the FiO2 levels of each different delivery system, we're talking about um, it's the fraction of inspired oxygen. Um, so if you think of that as um, it's a percentage typically, so um, room air or just regular um, atmosphere has about 21% oxygen. So what we're breathing in without um, added or supplemented oxygen is about 21% O2 that we're getting. So keeping that in mind, we're gonna go through some different um, delivery systems um, and kind of list the, the FiO2 with them. So before we do that, um, Oxygen isn't necessarily administered using that FiO2. Um, it's actually used uh, or delivered using liters per minute. That's how we um, uh, signify the amount that we're giving um, consistently. So you'd use this device called a flow meter to deliver a specific liter per minute amount of oxygen. So using this flow meter, we know how many liters per minute uh, patient is getting and then depending on the amount that they need or the FiO2 delivery that they need based on their um, situation um, we would set this this device so this flow meter goes into the wall um, and it it makes a bit of a, a, a shooting sound a pressure sound you attach this uh, piece this white piece onto the screws in the wall and it'll give a bit of a pushback so you have to make sure that it's exactly perpendicular and then you can screw it on um, and I'll just do that now and it'll give that spray sound. so if you don't know that it makes that sound it can be a little bit shocking at first and it kind of does a blast of air actually too in your in your face so there, now our, our flow meter is on and attached to the wall. And you'll even see right away, if you turn the dial um, towards you, that it will, you can hear the sound, and this little ball in here will start to, to raise. So how, and then there's, there's um, liters per minute markings on the side. So how we know how many liters per minute is the number we go to when it's cut off, when it cuts the ball off right in half. So right now the ball is right cut off at two, the two line, so that's delivering two liters per minute of oxygen. So we'll just turn it off um, right now for sound. Um, and we'll just kind of show that um, this as is won't deliver a lot of different types of oxygen because they can't connect here. So you need this essential piece um, called a, an adapter um, or sometimes people call it a Christmas tree because it is often green. There sometimes are white ones too, but um, so you, maybe oxygen adapter is the, the better term for it, but it's sort of shaped like a little Christmas tree there. And it's actually gonna connect onto your flow, the bottom of your flow meter in a similar fashion, sort of in that, that screw on um, method. So we're just gonna screw that on. You wanna make sure it's nice and tight. Not too tight so that if someone needs to get it off, they can't, but you want it to be secure on there. So it's nice and tight. Um, and then this is going to be the, the place where we connect a lot of the different oxygen types of tubing. So starting with the, the least, and we'll work our way up, we'll start with um, basic nasal prongs. So nasal prongs, or nasal cannula, as they're referred to, um, can go anywhere from one to six liters per minute, um, and they deliver an FiO2 of 24 to 44%. So I'll just get rid of that. So they come in a bag, just like that, um, and they're I think it's obvious, but um, per patient use, so you wouldn't want to share these among people, even if you clean them, they just get thrown out um, when the person's done with them, and you get a new pair if somebody else needed them, or maybe they needed them again. Um, so they come usually coiled up like this. Different facilities, they just look slightly different, but more or less um, nasal prongs are roughly the same. So they look like this, that, that fork look or that prong look, and you might notice that they're a little bit curved. So they curve 
like this. Um, and that's actually, we want the curve to go into the face. So not out towards the tip of the nose, but into the face um, on the person. So we'll hook up our uh, nasal prongs here. So we're just gonna attach this end to the Christmas tree adapter or adapter. Um, and it's good if you sort of stabilize here and firmly press it on there. And then if you kind of agitate it or pull on it a little bit, you want to make sure it doesn't um, break off easily. Um, because as you can imagine, you wouldn't want to walk away and this is disconnected from the oxygen and it's on their face. So you think it's being delivered, but really it isn't. Um, so then we're going to set it. So um, I said we have a range with the nasal prongs of one to six liters. So maybe we'll choose um, three, just somewhere in the middle. So we'll turn them on to three, and it's not as drastic all the time hearing it. So you just want to, um, if you, you don't want to touch this because it's going to go on the person's face, but you can usually feel it lightly blowing somewhere on your hand or your wrist, um, somewhere with sensitive skin and those fine hairs. Um, and now we're going to attach it to our patient. Um, and like we said, the, the prongs going in. Um, sometimes there's also sort of a ledge here, and that sort of ends up sitting on the person's upper lip. So we're going to apply it um, to our patient, putting it in, um, and then it goes over their ears, and I call it sort of like a cowboy hat um, mechanism, um, just like that. On Jake, it doesn't sit super well because his ears are attached to his head, but on uh, a real person, it can just easily go around their ears. Um, and then you can sort of tighten this um, little piece, and it, it helps keep it secure on a on a real person. Um, and also, I think, probably goes without saying, but if we, our patient did require oxygen, we would want to be monitoring their O2 sats, their respiratory rate, listening to their chest, doing our, our full chest assessment, um, and then also sitting them up, especially if they're having um, a hard time breathing. So just, just other things to note. But for now, we're focusing sort of on the oxygen um, mechanism of delivery. So that's the basics with the nasal prong tubing. The other thing with nasal prongs is if you go above a certain amount, so they say roughly around four liters per minute, is when it's not a bad idea to add humidity because that can be rather drying to the nares um, and the cavities there. So if we were to um, add humidity to the nasal prongs. Um, there is a, it comes in a package, um, but this is the humidifying bottle. Um, and then for humidity, you would use uh, sterile water. So you would just fill your bottle here with some fresh sterile water. So that you'd want this to be a new bottle that you crack open. And there's a max fill line and a mil, min fill line. So you want to make sure you're within those parameters. And then you just put your cap back on here. And this actually has its own adapter piece. So you can't attach it to the Christmas tree adapter. You actually remove that. Oh, and I put it on nice and tight there. So you'd want to remove your Christmas tree adapter and attach your humidifying bottle. And then we'll hook up our oxygen and say we're going to go to five liters and you'll see it bubble. So that's going to provide some humidity to the air so it's less drying for the person. Um, and that sort of brings us to people tend to like to, um, because of the drying effect of oxygen, um, sometimes it's instinctive to want to put Vaselines um, in their nose or on their lips, um, but we don't allow uh, petroleum-based products around oxygen um, because it can ignite. Um, the other thing, and I think it probably goes without saying, is you don't want any open flames or smoking around the oxygen because that also is a high risk of um, ignition and um, having a causing a fire or burns for your patient. So uh, that's kind of the basics of nasal prongs and then nasal prongs with humidity. So now we'll go over um, the simple face mask, um, as well as the non-rebreathe and modified rebreathe, because they all come together now in a, a single package. So they come in sort of that clear package with the label inside. Um, you'll see you get a mask, a reservoir bag, valves, and a, a little connector piece. So 
just so when you open that bag, you, you're kind of careful that you don't want everything kind of flying out all over the place. But starting with the simple face mask, because that's sort of stair-stepping our approach to oxygen delivery, this is where you go from 6 to 10 liters and then deliver 35 to 50% of FiO2. So the simple face mask, um, it's kind of in its name, it looks just like this. Um, it's got sort of a, a nose piece um, and it goes over the, the chin, you can imagine that. And then this goes around the person's head. Um, right now this is um, empty, so we'd actually, this is how you get the oxygen delivered here. So you connect this um, connector piece into there and then this is where it hooks up to your oxygen. Um, so you just piece them together like a puzzle and then same with as the nasal prongs, we're gonna hook it up to our adapter here of our flow meter and turn on our flow meter. So again, this would be anywhere from six to 10 liters, a simple face mask is good for. And then you're going to affix it to the person's face um, with the nose piece over the bridge of their nose um, and the strap behind their head. And you can pinch it so that, make sure you get a good seal. This is obviously an adult size mask. It fits nicely on Jake. Um, and you wanna make sure that it's delivering oxygen. And again, you're monitoring the person's respiratory status. Um, to move seamlessly onto the next mask, um, we will move on to the uh, rebreathe mask. Um, so you want to attach your rebreathe reservoir bag here. Um, if it's a rebreathe, you'll note there's no valve here, and I'll explain that in a second. But for a rebreathe, you just want to attach it without a valve into your face mask here. And for rebreathe, you can do 8 to 15 liters, and that's going to deliver 60 to 70 percent FiO2. And so now you're going to want to attach your oxygen to that piece. And what rebreathe refers to is that the person is able to rebreathe some of their ex exhaled air. So you want to turn on your oxygen and you actually want the reservoir bag to fill. Ours doesn't dramatically fill because of the force of oxygen, um, but in a facility it would fill a lot faster. Um, so this reservoir bag is what's going to deliver that, um, that oxygen to the patient. Um, but with that rebreathe function, they're actually going to exhale some air into this bag that they will then rebreathe. Um, and it also, um, there's no valves you'll notice on these side ports, so they can also exhale some air out into the, or inhale some air, sorry, um, from room air because these are open holes that they are pulling a little bit of room air potentially as well when they're breathing. So same idea, this you would just affix to their face. Our nose piece has come off a little bit, but um, you'd want to make sure that that was on um, correctly there and closed off. Um, so again, pinching it on the bridge of their nose, it fits nicely under their chin, making sure your reservoir bag is nice and, uh, or it's full at least, um, and then monitoring the patient with this one as well. So the difference between this one and a non-rebreathe, or now it's known as a modified non-rebreathe, just turn this down a little bit, um, is that you, the use of the valves. So in that package, like I said, it comes with these little white discs or they're flexible discs. These are the valves. So for modified non-rebreathe, you put a valve here. And as you can probably imagine or see a little bit, this acts as a one-way valve. So the person can suck um, the oxygen out of the reservoir bag because the valve lifts up. Um, and allows them to suck air out of here, but they can never breathe back into the bag. So they're never rebreathing um, their exhaled air from the bag because none of it ever enters there. Um, and then the other piece there is that we also put a valve on only one of these side ones. Um, and this is then going to um, limit, um, not completely eliminate, but limit the amount of room air that they inhale because this again is a one-way valve that when they're sucking in their mouth, they're breathing in um, here, this valve closes shut so they can't breathe in much room air. This one remains open so they can get some room air or they do get some room air, but this sort of limits that. Um, how this mask actually used to work was it had one of these one-way valves on e either side, on both sides. Um, so that created a dangerous situation for the patient as now you can probably imagine if somehow the oxygen came unhooked, the person could actually suffocate because they're not getting any room air. So they've changed it to this modified version for safety 
safety reasons really. So um, this for this uh, modified non-rebreather can be eight to 15 liters. So this is kind of our high, high flow guy. So we'll put him on, same idea as the other face masks, put him, put the mask on the person's face and attach that over the bridge of their nose. This can sort of be adjusted a little bit too. Um, and then we're wanting to make sure that reservoir bag is, is nice and full. Um, that being said, with oxygen, you'll notice pretty much all those different delivery systems have something, some sort of mechanism or tubing that goes around the person's ears, and that can be kind of irritating. So there are, um, you can use gauze pads or um, spongy uh, tube holders that sort of protect the person's ears and you want to be checking their their skin back there too um, quite frequently if they had oxygen on for a prolonged period of time so that's our our masks there that come in that one package there's one other mask um, that will show you the oxy mask this one is pretty neat because um, it can go from a low flow of one liter per minute to upwards of 15 liters per minute. So this one delivers a, a wide range of 24 to 90% FiO2. Um, hers is a little bit tangled. Um, and I'll just show you the, um, the mask itself is, is really nice for people who are maybe a little bit claustrophobic because it has these open windows. So the person is getting some room air there too, obviously, and just that feeling of maybe not so claustrophobically in that plastic mask. Um, the other benefit of this one is you could put a straw through there so the person can actually sip fluids um, while getting um, kind of high flow delivery of oxygen, which isn't the case with the simple face mask or the rebreathe. Um, and modified non-rebreathe. So this one, same idea, we're just going to hook it up to our flow meter adapter, turn it on to our desired rate. So say we want 10 liters, again, that's where the, the ball is gonna cross or get cut off by the 10 line, and we're gonna apply it to our patient's face, just like this. So these ones are a little bit nicer. Also this kind of moves, so if the oxygen's on this side, it, it easily adapts to that, or if it's on the other side, um, it easily adapts to that. So that's sort of the basics of the oxy mask.